Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Jane Goes Betty by Michael Thomas Ford. This is the second book in his series about Jane Austen as a vampire. The first book is Jane Bites Back, um, which I've already reviewed. I will post the link to that one in the description below. Start there because this review will spoil the first book if you guys haven't gotten there yet. Um, I really love this series. Um, this blending of like vampires but in a completely different way where we have Jane who doesn't really want to kill people this thing kind of happened to her now she's a vampire she has to drink blood but she doesn't really want to um and I just I love how she's imagined as a character and she's still just as quick witted witted <laughs> she has just as sharp a wit as her novels have and a it feels believable like this is how Jane Austen would view our world especially if she's like progressed through 200 years of living um so yes these books are really funny and enjoyable they're kind of chicklitish but um I like that so that's like a bonus <laughs> so from this point on there will be spoilers for book one so if you haven't read that yet Go do that first or at least watch the review for that um <laughs> all right book two jane's novel constance has finally been published after 200 years of rejections <laughs> and it's a huge success everybody is raving about it it's getting turned into a movie and they are anxiously awaiting her second book that she can't seem to even start and now it's way late and her editor has taken a new job, and so Jane's got a new editor breathing down her neck. One who hates her. One who previously rejected the first book, Constance. Um, and it's just not, not fun. A lot of this book is Jane trying to write the next novel and feeling all the pressure about it. Um, she also has a horde of fans who show up at her door. And are like, let's see if she'll answer and talk to us. And Jane's like, I just want to get on with my life. What are you doing here? Um, so dealing with the pressure of stardom. And they want to make a movie out of her life. Or they want to make a movie out of the book. And they want to film it in her hometown. And Jane's, at first, they want her involved. And the more they're filming, the less she's feeling involved. And kind of taken by surprise by all the changes they're making to her book. So while all that is happening in regards to her book, Jane is also trying to learn more about being a vampire, which she is sorely lacking in as she's discovering that she can become invisible, which she didn't even know was a thing before, and can hear animals' thoughts. So Jane's got a lot to still learn, and her friend, former lover, maker, Lord Byron is there to help her. <laughs> I love Byron as a character and this relationship they have where he's like flirtatious but like knows that it's not actually going to happen so it's an interesting dynamic and how Jane kind of reluctantly accepts his help like she doesn't really want it but like she kind of needs to know more about what being a vampire is and how did she get 200 years of being a vampire without knowing any of this and she's constantly like she seems like she's like surprised by the stuff that she can do and she doesn't know whether to believe him when he says that like oh turning into a bat is the thing and she's like is it really am i gonna get to learn to do that um so i love jane learning more about being a vampire and her powers and i love her relationship with byron i love the way that he interacts with like everybody else around them um pretty much nobody else in the town knows that they're two of them are vampires also which is interesting and that there's like these two really famous authors in their presence. Um, well, more famous than I think they are. Jane now has a hit novel and Byron's been publishing under different names, which have also become hits. Also happening in this book. This book is just like, like a continuation of like more things that are happening in Jane's life. Um, also happening in this book, there is an upcoming romance festival, which is kind of themed around this competition between Jane Austen fans and Bronte fans and they want Jane to kind of be their head finger 
for Jane Austen, not knowing that she's actually Jane Austen. And she's kind of, like, torn between, like, puzzlement around, like, this obsession with her original books and, like, why, why, like, it's such a big deal. Um, and then we have the competition between all the Bronte fans, which kind of puzzles me be because I love them both. Like, I love Jane Eyre and I love Jane Austen's books. Like, I don't understand why you can't love them both. But apparently there exists this huge competition between the fans of the different book bases. And so throughout this festival, there are like dunking contests to dunk Mr. Darcy. And the big kind of climax is this softball game, which Jane is... And the big kind of climax of the festival is this uh, the softball game where Jane is supposed to coach the Jane Austen fans and Byron is supposed to coach the Bronte fans and it's kind of just really interesting and amusing to look at like the obsession and the hype around these old novels um but at the same time I would probably still be there and be like yes exciting book stuff happening I don't know it kind of boggles my mind, but also is like I would I would be there. And finally, we have Jane's relationship with her boyfriend Walter, which is progressing to the point that maybe they might end up getting married. And it kind of is tugging on Jane's conscience. Like Walter doesn't know that she's a vampire, and should she tell him? And like what keeping that secret from him is doing to her. And at the same time, Walter's mother is coming to town. And Walter told his mom that Jane is converting to being Jewish, but she had no idea that that was even a conversation that was happening. And now Jane's trying to really quickly learn about being Jewish and going to the synagogue and trying to like play it off like, yes, I've been thinking about converting the entire time. Um, so I love the rabbi. She meets Ben, who's this new character, and his wisdom and his... Um, He's, he's a younger guy, and he's definitely relatable and interesting, and I, I love his wisdom and how he just takes everything at face value and kind of talks Jane through this emotional struggle she's having with whether or not to tell him that she's a vampire without them ever actually bringing up that that's what it's really about, just as generalized. Like, if you're struggling with something, maybe you should talk it through with him. Um... And Jane's also dealing with this whole theological debate about whether or not she has a soul. Um, so there is a lot going on in this book. Jane is under a heck of a ton of stress. Um, and most of this is just her trying to figure out what's really important and what she needs, like grappling with all of it and trying to keep all these balls in the air and balance her time and really trying to write the next book while dealing with the fact that she's a vampire and is keeping that a secret from the people that she loves most. Um, I love the humor in these books a lot and how Jane sees the world and how um, kind of crazy things can get. Um, there's also the whole dealing with the fact that Jane almost killed Charlotte Bronte in the last book and what if Charlotte comes back to get vengeance that's always looming in like the back of their heads that this could be a thing that's gonna happen and whenever something bad happens they think it's Charlotte. Um, and also Jane's best friend Lucy does know that she's a vampire and Lucy and Byron are always kind of chiding her for like Jane's like I'm not a killer and they're like yeah except you almost killed Charlotte Bronte. She's like it doesn't count she's not dead. <laughs> so I don't know I really I love this book and enjoy it a lot. I am totally loving the series. I'm in book, I'm halfway through book three already. I adore These are really enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, guys. If you are not reading these books, you should be. <laughs> so yeah, book two did not disappoint. I am super loving book three. Also, so definitely go read Jane Goes Baddie. Read the whole series if you aren't. It's totally 
worth it. A lot is going on in this book. Jeez. Yeah. Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.